Year after year, fairgoers come to the Minnesota State Fair to eat food on a stick, catch a ride on the Midway, and see farm animals. Visiting the House of Representatives booth is also a tradition for many. Is taking the poll part of your tradition that you do? Every time, yes. With the great Minnesota get-together now over, let's take a look at one last fair tradition, the unveiling of the results from the poll. Publicly funded preschool for all four-year-olds was a highly debated topic during the 2015 legislative session and was the first question on the opinion poll. Governor Mark Dayton is a central advocate of the universal pre-K proposal. He and others say the early starts can provide children with important skills that will help them do well in school and help close the achievement gap. They will learn better and faster and they will get a better education for it. Critics argue that the proposal is too broad. An expansion of preschools to the public schools would price many private, for-profit, and non-profit child care providers out of business. Seniority has long been the primary factor for most Minnesota public school districts when determining teacher layoffs in times of budget cuts Opponents say the current system risks firing excellent teachers while keeping subpar instructors and that effectiveness and merit should also be considered. But those in favor of the status quo say doing away with the practice would unfairly diminish the impact of seniority and disrupt an environment of collaboration among teachers. When the issue was part of our 2012 poll, 71.9% favored school districts use of performance evaluations when determining teacher layoffs, 20.4% opposed the plan. Another education question before poll takers was whether the state should require parents or guardians to talk to a physician before opting their child out of being vaccinated. The question is based on House File 393, a bill sponsored by Representative Mike Freiberg, a DFLer from Golden Valley. Freiberg says his bill is all about keeping kids healthy and avoiding vaccine-preventable diseases. However, opponents consider the proposal an unnecessary mandate. Most parents love their children enough that they'll make that decision on their own, and they might talk to the physician anyway. Most Minnesotans agree that investments are needed in the state's infrastructure, but how to pay for them is a point of contention. In recent years, transit advocates have pushed for an increase in a Twin Cities area quarter cent sales tax to fund investments in light rail, commuter rail, and rapid bus transit projects. Others say the state should focus on maintaining and upgrading existing roads and bridges, not expanding bus and rail routes while utilizing existing funding sources to do so. Minnesota's minimum wage for large employers increased to $9 per hour and $7.25 per hour for small employers on August 1st. Poll takers weighed in on whether employers should be permitted to pay lower hourly wages to tipped workers, such as restaurant wait staff, if tips bring their pay above $12 an hour. Those who favor the plan say, in part, if the wage isn't lowered, Businesses that currently staff waiters for full table service might be financially motivated to move to fast casual dining and let waiters go. Opponents call the proposal a penalty on people who earn tips for their work. Staying with the income theme, the poll asked if Social Security income should be exempt from Minnesota's individual income tax. Proponents say the tax makes Minnesota less competitive with other states that don't have the tax and encourages retirees to leave the land of 10,000 lakes for a place where their retirement savings go further. Others argue by not taxing Social Security, a huge hole in the budget could be created, leaving a large bill for the next generation to pay. Fairgoers were also asked if the state constitution should be amended to protect electronic communications and data such as email or text messages from unreasonable government searches and seizure. Those critical to the proposal say the Constitution doesn't need to be amended to specify protection for digital records, since they say the courts already do this. Fairgoers weighed in on whether the state should help local law enforcement agencies purchase body cameras to be worn 
by officers. I thought particularly the body camera for all our local law enforcement was important for their safety and to take care of any accusations that may or may not be true alleged against them. While some say body-worn cameras will bring transparency to police actions and can reveal crucial information during police investigations, others express concern that requiring officers to record every encounter with the public could undermine privacy rights. The question on whether undocumented immigrants should be able to get a state-issued driver's license was also up for consideration. Supporters say eliminating the need for proof of lawful residency in the United States to obtain a driver's license would mean more insured drivers on Minnesota roads. However, concerns have been raised that undocumented immigrants could use the licenses to vote. During the 2015 special session, a provision that would have required voters to display a trailer decal certifying that they've taken an aquatic invasive species education course was repealed. Instead, new language has been added to applications for all watercraft and non-resident fishing licenses, asking applicants to affirm they profess awareness of invasive species prevention. Fairgoers shared if they approved the original requirement. Should school districts, cities, and counties that propose spending-related referendums be required to hold all special elections on Election Day in November? Supporters say tying certain special elections to one common date would increase voter turnout and bring more predictability to voters in terms of knowing when such elections would be held. However, opponents claim such a change would take away the flexibility that school districts currently have to time special elections with capital project needs dependent on seasonal construction. Safety versus freedom are the opposing sides to the last poll question. While some fireworks are legal in Minnesota, others like bottle rockets and firecrackers are not. Those opposed to expanding legal fireworks, including Governor Dayton, have expressed concerns about safety, but others say Minnesotans should have the freedom to celebrate how they like. Might as well. I mean, people that live here go to Wisconsin and North Dakota and wherever else to buy them. You know, people get hurt. People get hurt all the time, you know. Even the sparklers are pretty dangerous, too, and they let them use those. Thank you for being part of our tradition and participating in our poll with the 2016 legislative session scheduled to begin March 8th, we'll have to wait and see if any of these issues go from questions on the 2015 opinion poll to laws of the state. <laughs>